This is the fourth supplemental video to the Advanced Convoy Attack tutorial. In this video, we will be taking a look at how we can check our torpedo paths to ensure that they aren't going to hit the wrong target when shooting across columns. And we will also see how to check line of sight to ensure that we will have line of sight to a target that is across column when it is time to fire. So we'll once again start with a bit of abstraction. And the tactical scenario is that convoy is again a 3x3 three three box, our same example convoy, modified a little bit. In this convoy we have a Kitterin Maru here and a Kitterin Maru here. And for whatever reason, perhaps orders or perhaps just our personal priorities, we want to try and hit both of these targets. We also have medium freighters in these three positions and some small tankers in these positions and a small freighter back here. But we'll say our priority is to hit these two Kitterin Maru's and preferably one of these medium freighters as well. So let's start by drawing a couple lines representing the convoy's uh, course. and match him up with a grid line 750 yard circle and there's the spacing and we will also draw another 750 yard circle for convenience So, Kidron Maru and Kidron Maru, and we are going to attack from the convoy's port side over here. So, medium freighter and medium freighter and a medium freighter and small tanker here that we don't really care about that much uh, small tanker small tanker small freighter the Kitter and Maru's being an inner column I'm gonna wanna hit with mark 18's we will start by figuring out our attack envelope which will be something like this and I want to maximize my distance from a lead destroyer who is operating in here so I'm gonna attack from the edge of the envelope so I'm gonna to need to know where that is and these targets will hit one of them with mark 14's so from this target to this target Mark 14 no engagement zone is down here from him to him it's over here from him to him it's over here him to him down here and this is crude but we can get a sense that these are not going to interplay on our um, oh, him to him would be up here somewhere but we can get a sense that these are not going to affect our engagement. These um, no engagement zones for mixing Mark 14s and Mark 18s. So, in order to push our Mark 18 envelope to where we'll have as much destroyer room from this destroyer as possible, I'm going to say we will start with, or we will have 30 seconds between target 1 and target 2 which is 
4,000 yards is a run time of 245 minus 30 is 215 which is a distance of 3,500 yards. Okay, bring this in a little bit so I can be sure they're as accurate as I can get them. And there's our first mark. Bring this in to 3,000. And 2,500. Just love to do that. And we will bring this one in to 2,000. And this one to 1,500. So there's our third mark. And we can see one of our points is off. I am inclined to think it's the middle one, but we will check. So, 3,000 and 2,500. Yep. It's actually not that far off, but. We'll also check the end point. 4,000 and 3,500. It's just about right on. Okay, so it's probably pretty close to that. And maximum range to target one. 3,500 yards. So the very edge of the envelope is right here. So how do we go about checking whether our attack from this position to here and here will um, be obstructed by targets in this column. And it's actually not that hard to figure out. We're going to need the track angle to both targets. Which is 54 and 44 degrees. And that is 12 degrees and 10 degrees uh, lead angle so and there we go right there in the middle so 12 degrees right there and 10 degrees right there okay so I'm going to get rid of this line just so it's not in the way one less thing. So we have this line which is our torpedo track to target 2. This line which is our torpedo track to target 1. This line is our where our point of aim is to target 1. 
and this line would be the lead line to target one. If I called him target one earlier, I'm wrong, that's target two. So, from time of launch to time of impact, torpedoes will have traveled this distance and similarly from time of launch to when torpedoes are in this lane targets will have traveled this distance so it's the difference between the torpedo track angle and the lead angle at whatever distance and make sure that you're on the track angle not the target not a target easy mistake to make okay so first thing we're gonna check is the first target on the near column and from time of launch to time of impact this target will travel in this distance so at time of launch this target will be here and we'll draw a 150 yard circle um, that's a good average for most medium to large size Japanese merchantmen um, they tend to be in the 130 to 150 ballpark. Um, a couple of exceptions to look out for would be the Conte Verde liner, and that's the only real exception in the merchantman area. And of course, the big warships are bigger. A Yamato battleship is 287 yards long. Um, a less extreme example would be a Maya Heavy Cruiser, which is 223, or an Agano Light Cruiser, 190. But for merchantmen, 150 is a good approximation, covers all your bases. And remember, this 150 is a radius. So, ship length is actually about that distance. But because um, targets aren't always in the exact position they're supposed to be. I just like to say, well, we'll just use a 150 yard circle. So if the target's half a ship length off, his bow would be here or his stern would be here. Okay, so we can see that at time of launch, this target will be here and this target will be here and we can see our lead line does not intersect with these circles near the line and remember these are ship length these ships are not obviously not 150 yards wide so at time of launch we will be able to see target one pretty clearly so how do we figure um, where our torpedoes are going to be. And it's pretty simple. Start with the f um, lead target of the near column. He will have traveled this distance at time of launch. And where he will be when the torpedoes are in his lane will be this distance minus this distance, which, as you remember, was that measurement. So this distance minus this distance means he will be right here when targets are in this lane. And this target will be right here when targets are in this lane. 
Now, you could, on paper, just say, okay, 1100 minus 750, punch that into a calculator and draw a, a circle of whatever radius you get. But I don't recommend that. That's because of the precision of the game tools will induce extra rounding error when you do it like that. So doing it visually like this is the uh, most reliable way. Anyways, we can see that the torpedo track to target one goes neatly between these two circles. And we've already checked line of sight, so that will work out just fine. Let's now check target two, who will have traveled this distance from time of launch to impact. And similarly, the distance from the torpedo track to the um, line of sight track is that distance. So the lead target, we don't need these anymore, or I guess we do, we need one. So as we can see, our, um, we won't be able to see this target at time of launch because this target will be in the way. But supposing we can deal with that, when the torpedoes are crossing this lane, this target will be here, which means we will probably hit the near freighter. And that would be a very bad result for us because these torpedoes would go boom 900 yards early. And that equates to 55 seconds. So when these torpedoes go off 55 seconds early, everybody's going to have 55 seconds to evade, and that will probably foil our whole attack plan. So how do we work out where uh, we need to be in order for both salvos to cross this column? And it's not too complicated going to draw another 150 yard circle okay so I'm gonna leave this here and we are going to redraw the um, measurements that we need for this target and where ships will be. So, lead ship will be here. Don't need that. There we go. So, at when these torpedoes are in this lane, these torpedoes are in this lane, this ship will be there. And this ship will be here. Just like that. So, what we're going to do is move our angles, our angle measurements, so that they avoid both circles. And, let's see, this can be made easier by, or a little bit more accurate by making sure the ends of your angle measurement are at the endpoints that you're interested in and not 
out past them. So, if we move this one to where he can clear that target, and I'm going to move up the 3,500 yard uh, engagement zone, and there we go. So from right here, it looks like it's probably possible, but the position of these is going to change a little bit. So it's not super precise, but it should be in the ballpark. So what we're going to have to do is recheck the lead angles. So 49 degrees and 39 degrees. 49 is 11 and 39 is 9 so there's 11 there's 9 And these are going to move. Again, these will be close, but not precise. So I'm going to need this measurement. And I'm going to need this measurement. As you can see, these both went up a little bit. And we'll need that measurement. No, yes. And that measurement. So 600, 950. There we go. checking on target one and our line of sight will be just barely cleared here so that works and our torpedo run is also just barely cleared right here so that works and now checking on target 2 or target 1 again but from see if the middle ship is in the way this ship um, that puts him there and him there so we can see that we're gonna have a lot of distance from this ship for our uh, torpedo track and should be about the same amount of distance for um, our line of sight track so that's fine Now let's check target two. And, oops, I was on the wrong point. Okay. So, our 150 yard circle you can see line of sight clears them not by a lot again and our torpedo track clears him again but again not by a lot
this is the foundations of a plan that could work. Um, probably we overcompensated a little bit and could stand a shift just a little bit down this way to balance things out, but here's the thing. This plan has so many um, near things in it that I really cannot recommend this plan. Um, and it can work on paper and if everything works out just right for you it can work out as an attack but it would not be reliable and if you're gonna try it anyways you could keep in mind that if we hit this target and this target with mark 14's both of them are engagement envelope for that would be something like this so yes it actually is possible to come up with a plan that mixes balanced stern to torpedoes and hits this target this target this target and this target that being said this plan is so unreliable that at least with this convoy speed of nine knots that I cannot recommend it uh, it would put it pretty purely into the realm of dumb luck slash trick shots and it's not something that I would ever actually do when it mattered. Um, so your best bet would be to just hit one of these Kitter and Maroos with your Mark 18s and we're gonna arbitrarily say this guy it doesn't really matter which one and we are going to see how we can use the um, these concepts to decide where the best point to attack from is Again, we're going to have this target will travel this distance and when torpedoes cross this lane, targets will have traveled this distance. So, target one, or near the lead ship of the near column, would be here and I'm going to draw a couple more of these and that one looks good And these don't need to be perfect. They're just approximations anyways. But okay, this guy would be here when torpedoes cross this lane. And he would be here when we fire. And this target will be right here when torpedoes cross his lane. We notice we got a lot of overlap there. And he would be right here when we fire. So what we can do, and this isn't going to be super precise, but it can be made more precise by making sure that's actually at the end. There we go. Now we can move this around the edge of the circle. And we can see that from this position, we will clear 
uh, both targets neatly in both um, when the torpedoes cross the track and line of sight. We could also do it from this position pretty cleanly. But let's just suppose I like this position. And remember, the further you move this line, the less accurate this result is going to become. So, down here, it'll be moderately accurate, but not super precise. So let's try right there. Looks to be about in the middle in both and I don't need this anymore so from here all we do is refigure our lead angle our track angle etc and that's a angle of 45 degrees track angle which is a uh, 10 degree lead angle. So you can see I'm a little off there. And that's easy to correct. Not off by a lot, but a little. So there we go. And we will check this. And there's that distance. So, lead target near column will be here when we fire. And you can see the degree of error there. It, it wasn't huge and lead target near column would be here when the torpedoes are in his column and here um, the middle target of the near column will be here when we fire. I moved that to get out of the way earlier, if you recall. And it would be like that. So you can see we've got easy clearance with this solution. And that's the basics of it. Um, one other thing you need to keep in mind is if you are engaging with fairly extreme gyro angles especially this line here is not actually a torpedo track unless you're shooting zero gyro. It is a pseudo torpedo track. And what that means, and I'm not going to draw this to scale, suppose our sub is on this course when we fire. Much like our um, previous attack where we mixed balanced stern tubes on multiple targets. So, our torpedoes will come out of the bow of the sub here, and they would run straight a short distance, whatever, I'm not drawing this to scale, remember, and then they will have a turn arc, something like that, and when they have turned onto the appropriate course, they will then run to the target. And this, keeping in mind that's not to scale, would be our true torpedo track. And this effect becomes more extreme the higher the gyro angle. Um, when you're engaging multiple targets with the bow, tubes only, and you're pointing at one, of, one in the middle, this effect is very minimal. In fact, our 
relative angles might look something like that, which is not very significant in the difference, especially by the time it gets to crossing this um, lane. But you can see the difference can be pretty significant crossing this lane for an extreme gyro angle. And when you're talking about ship clearance, that's something you got to keep in mind. So that's the end of this video, and I hope that it was informative, and I hope to see you next time.